Hey everyone, how's it going? Bowser the Healer here, and today my comment section has come up with a video. This comment was from, I want to say, Scrisis is how I say your name. I'll put it on screen right now. But they had some wonderful M plus questions for me, and I thought I could make a video about this. This is the kind of thing that I get asked when I'm live, but I don't really ever bring that back to YouTube. So I figured this would be a good chance to do that. I also have another video about not getting intimidated by um, running out of cooldowns on preservation and a video about my opinions on Raid as a whole. So if you have any comments and questions for me about Raid, I will answer them in that video. So drop into the comment section if you want to throw me a line. And of course, hey, get subscribed if you like this kind of content. Mean the world to me. Got a lot more coming. I love playing healer in this game and I'll be making tons more content to come. So let's jump right into it. Number one, while pugging, what do you look for in a successful group? Good control, good defensives, good positioning, good priority target damage. Those are like my four, like the four cornerstones of good hugging because you have to adjust as a healer or not really as a healer. I guess anyone in the group has to adjust when players aren't doing their job fully. And as a healer, I find I have to do a ton of adjusting compared to when I play DPS. Maybe it's because I'm the problem when I DPS. But that being said, good control means using your CC and your interrupts effectively, right? There's definitely times to just blast and kick anything. But what if we're on a pack with really bad curses that have to be kicked, but also really bad abilities. I'm thinking of some of the packs in Uldaman that have, uh, I wanna say it's like Hail of Stone or something like that, but like, or the uh, the packs that have Withering Curse and Shadow Bolt Volley, right? There's like four kicks before the third boss of Underrot that you have to have down and you don't wanna overlap on it because it could be really, really bad if you do. So I like to see good control, good CC used to stop things and interrupt things and help the DPS get damage. And speaking of damage, good cooldown usage, right? You're not holding things for three, four pulls in a row. You're not just padding on packs. You're actually doing priority target damage and bursting down a mob so that the party can move on a bit quicker. Remember, it's just if you're not doing good priority target damage, one target will live with a lot of health. That's not really ideal. And it can really slow down a dungeon like by a ton. It's actually kind of crazy. I wish I had a solid way to like express that math so i am looking to do a test so we can get some real numbers on that but either way priority target damage pretty important also like pre-positioning like are the melee standing away from the tank are they able to move in case the tank has to shift a frontal are they able to run out easily if they get targeted for a mechanic i just like seeing players position well even in melee in ranged you know just make sure the healer can get to you you're not gonna butt pull any mobs right but you enter a pull and you start moving into a spot where you can do the most damage you can do and you have the least amount to worry about. And that way your healer can meet you wherever the wherever, wherever the heck the pull goes next. It doesn't matter. Hopefully the healer's got your back once you do some good pre-positioning. So I feel like that's another thing. Players can just get better. I don't have to really explain good defensives though and good off healing. Just use them. Bring a dispel to the dungeon, please. I beg of you. Also like raid wide mechanics, things like Zephyr for your party or rallying cry for your whole raid. That's a really important button, and it's so nice when players are like, Hey Bowser, when do you want my rallying cry? Because it's it just saves me a step in the process. So I really like players who do that. That's what, those, those are all the things I think a successful group should have. It doesn't always work like that, so you have to fill in the gaps. Do I CC early, or do I hold my CC knowing my team's going to blast? Do I use my kick so that way I reduce incoming, or do I hold it because no one's going to kick that bolt volley? Healers have long been trained to accept all responsibility for the failure of any group. If something bad happens, how do you determine how much you are culpable as a healer for what happened? It's funny, I feel like I lived in the era of this transitioning because I used to hear the jokes about healers in WoW not doing their job before I started playing WoW, but I started in Shadowlands and very quickly, like, I did get blamed by a lot of people, but then as I kept playing, eventually the blame went away and people were a lot better about reporting the actual mistakes players made. So maybe that is like a cultural change, or maybe I just got out of doing like seven keys. But I look at details. Everything I need to know is based on details. So it's check the death uh, window. Hey, who died to what? Did they die to something reactable or unreactable? Did they take a large portion of damage? That was your fault for not healing first. Uh, there's a lot to think about. You can't heal everyone and you can't heal perfectly. So it's it's good to use details to kind of be like, oh, hey, I didn't realize that that's a move that happens when we don't do this mechanic or, hey, that DPS died with no cooldowns. They're not using cooldowns, so you should keep an eye on them so you can external them the next time they're in trouble. 
It's also really good for like scouting out tanks that suck, right? If your tank is uh this happens to me all the time where like a paladin shows up and the paladin's like super bad and they have like sub 50% consecration uptime on like every single fight and you're just like why is this dude dying? But if you look at details, you'll be like, oh, they didn't use Shield of the Righteous. They didn't get their buffs up. Oh, they also didn't, you know, stand in their mastery and consecration. Those things add up and it, it can feel toxic to tell a player that. But if you're healing a, a healer that like you're healing a healer, if you're healing a tank that just isn't doing their end of the deal. Tell them, right? Even if they're embarrassed and they snap back at you, there's a high chance that they fix the problem anyway. And that's pretty important in my book. What kind of composition would you put into an organized group? Oh, this is such a hard one for me because I have so many answers to this. But my comp, my dream team is a feral druid and then like either a fire mage or a shadow priest and then like a DK, like a like a frost or an unholy. Like I'm down for either, like whatever, whatever they're confident on. I really like that setup. I think feral druid, you get the off healing cooldown, you get the battle res DK, you get a battle res. Uh, you get mass grip, you get AMZ, and then you have like either another off heal with um, with like a shadow priest or you have like a fire mage just blasting. I really like that that setup. You have to see it a lot in the MDI actually for season one. That being said, I actually just like it for comfort reasons. It's important to note that again, I pug this game. I'm not like an organized player who's pushing world record keys, although I would like that opportunity at some point. So like. For me, I just want like a comfortable key. That being said, talking about tanks and comfort, um, I started playing this game with a brewmaster who I still play with, uh, fur brew, fur war, fur bows. You'll see him in my videos. One of my best friends, and then a homie of mine named Sarath who played Demon Hunter. Sarath, I hope you watch this video or Starfalls watches it and tells you about it. But he was like the best tank to start playing the game with. Shadowlands season two. Dude was pumping, dude Dude was so good with defensives, would tell you exactly what was left and, and, and what he could do before he was out of buttons. The communication was solid, the gameplay was great, and I loved Demon Hunters until I played with a pug Demon Hunter and they sucked. And I find so few Demon Hunters that are that good. I only had one other Demon Hunter friend. Hopefully they watch this video and they DM me, was it me? Because I'll tell them it was them. That being said, good Death Knights and good Brewmasters. There's just something about it, especially with preservation. Reversion just puts in so much work on those two classes. They're like breezy to heal. Like I don't have to worry about a DK or a monk popping very often. And with DKs, at least you get a bit of a warning with purgatory. However, good DK players make it feel like they're just unkillable. And it's awesome to play with. It's super fun, especially if you have communication with them. Uh, I do have a DK in my current guild and it's just great. Like, he just says everything and I and I just know what's going on. So. Uh, when I'm pugging, if they're good, great. In an organized group, I love having them. So they're they're definitely my favorites. What are some player assumptions about being an evoker healer that have caused you issue? I don't want to go over the ones that everyone knows. Everyone in the comments section, you can sound off with me. Them pretending that range doesn't exist and that we don't have range issues. That's the worst. Um, we definitely have situations where players don't think we have mana problems, but then like a tank chain pulls like back to back to back to back and the pulls are messy and no one's kicking and you're out of mana. And then it's like, bro, I need something for this boss fight. <laughs> like, come on. But the, the two real ones for me that I don't think it talked about enough is we're slow. First of all, we're very slow because we have some moves that are instant cast, right? Like echo and reversion and verdant embrace rewind even to an extent. But then we also have like living flame and spirit bloom and dream breath all really slow to start moves so there are times where someone's like hanging in the balance their life is in your hands and you're charging a spirit bloom and you're like i sure hope they don't get targeted by the next spell because <laughs> there's nothing else you can do you need to heal everyone in the party because you're all taking damage but one player in particular is like critical and you have to decide do i release this early or do i heal everyone and it rarely comes up but when it does come up someone dies and they're like bro, what'd you do? Like, why'd you let me die? And it's like, it's hard to explain. Like, I wish you hit your self heal button because it just takes me a moment sometimes to prep the heal uh, with the slower cast time. So it's not, it's not like egregious or bad, but it's certainly like I've gotten caught in situations where I'm like, oh gee, we're gonna die. I can't cast this fast enough. Or I like, I haven't been able to cast for a minute and I'm like, please. But then also we're cooldown based. So like players will, assume we have cooldowns or ways to heal them 
But like on a fall on a on a boss on a boss like Vortex Pinnacle boss two or Halls of Infusion boss three, I don't have anything left in the tank. Sometimes sometimes I'm waiting on cooldowns and I'm pressing Living Flame to save a life. It's not easy to heal those things and it does require a lot of your buttons. And then somebody makes a mistake and they're like, Healer, why don't you help me? And it's like, I'd love to help you, but I literally have Living Flame as my only option right now, and that's not gonna save you. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any additional questions, whether it be for raid or for maybe I do another round of these videos, hit me up in the questions, uh, in the question section, in the comment section. I'd love to answer them. And of course, hey, get subscribed if you like this content. There's plenty more where this came from. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.